In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a loan amortization schedule in Google Sheets. This will help you see the regularly scheduled payments of a loan and what you can see is how the interest payments and principal payments change over time. So amortized loans, um, common examples are like home loans, auto loans, personal loans, um, any loan with a regularly scheduled payment and constant interest rate. Um, those are the type of schedules that I'm going to show you how to make in Google Sheets. So the first thing that we need to do to create our schedule is we need to create our basic template. Um, so what I like to do is in the very top corner, I will put an area for my principal amount which is the loan amount, um, the interest rate on the loan, the loan term in years, and then the start date of the loan. And then what you're going to need is you're going to need a column for period, date, monthly payment, interest rate, principal payment, and loan balance. So the very first thing you need to do is create something like this in your own spreadsheet. And then what we're going to do is we're going to begin filling in the information. So first we will do the principal amount, which is the total amount that needs to be paid for the loan. So in this example, I will just do 252,000. Um, we're gonna assume that we're buying a house and that is the principal amount of the loan. Then what you wanna do is put in the interest rate. So I'm gonna do 2.875% for the interest rate. And then this is going to be a 30 year loan with the start date of August 1st, and we'll do 2021. So this is just the loan information. After you get that filled out, we will go one by one into the rest of the columns in this table and fill them out. So the very first thing that we're gonna fill out is the period column. This is basically just a serial number that represents each payment being made. So the first line, we're gonna do zero because no payment is made. And then from there on, it's just gonna increment. So I will just put this all the way down. Um, you can see it's a rather large table because it's a 30 year loan. So there is a bunch of payments. So 360. Next, we are going to fill out the date column. So there's a few different ways you can do this. Um, what we're going to do is the first period is going to have a start date of, um, well, the same as our start date. And the next period, so we're gonna use a formula to increment the month. What we're gonna use is the e-date formula. So E date, and then we want to click on the uh, date of our first period or period zero, and then we're going to do one and our closing parentheses. And you can see that's going to increment it by one. And I'll just paste this down so you can see each period that I go down now um, with this E date formula here. Uh, my period or my date is incrementing by one month as my period increments. So that is what we want. Um, next, we need to enter the monthly payment column. To do this, we're going to use the PMT function. I uh, will just go over the basic syntax here. So the PMT function, what this does is it calculates monthly payment on a loan. Um, so the three arguments that we will be using in this function First is the rate, which is the interest rate. And then there's number of periods, which is the number of periods to be made. And then it's what's called the present value. Um, this is basically just the principal amount. So the PMT function, we're gonna need to use this function to get this column. So what we will end up doing here is the first month is going to be zero because no payment is going to be made and then what we're going to do is in this first period here, we need to 
enter this function. So equals PMT. Now the first um, argument in this loan formula, uh, let me just paste this actually so we can follow along. Okay, so equals PMT. So the first is the interest rate. So that is going to be B2 in my spreadsheet. What you want to do is you want to make sure you take the absolute value or basically you lock your formula. So I'm going to hit F4 because I'm going to copy and paste this formula all the way down and I want this to stay locked taking from this interest rate. Each row that I go down I don't want my formula to take um, from another row down. Uh, so that is F4. It's going to put these dollar signs around your values so that, make sure it's locked. Now since there's 12 months in a year what I'm going to do since my uh, term is in years and I make monthly payments is I have to divide this interest rate by 12. So that's going to be the first argument of the PMT function is this rate here and then comma then I move on to the next argument in this function which is the number of periods. So that is just in my uh, spreadsheet it's B3 here and I have to lock this formula too so F4 and then since there's 12 months in a year I have to multiply this by 12 and then comma and then next present value that's just our principal amount so in my spreadsheet it's B1 and I lock that and then I'm going to add my closing parentheses put press enter then I can paste that all the way down and this will be my monthly payment that is made on a loan um, with this interest rate over this number of periods. So it should be constant all the way down. Um, next, we will be filling out the interest rate or interest payment column. To fill out this column, we are going to be using the IPMT function. So the IPMT function, this is the basic syntax. There's rate, period, number of periods, present value, future value, and end or beginning. So rate is just the interest rate. Period, this is the amortization period. Um, in other words, this is just the same thing as the period we have in our table. It's just basically a serial number that represents the payment number being made. Um, next argument is number of periods which is the total number of periods that will be made. And then present value, um, this is just the principal amount. And then these two arguments are optional. Um, we're not going to be using them in this example. So I will take this and I'll just paste this here so we can follow along as we enter this formula in our spreadsheet. So for the interest rate here, um, this zero period there's going to be no interest rate and then for this second row in our table this is where we need to begin entering the formula so equals IPMT and I'm going to press tab so the first argument here is our rate which is our interest rate so B2 again you want to make sure to lock this and then divide by 12 and then I'm going to do a comma then we are on our period argument. So the that, I have my periods over here is the first column, so A8. This is the only argument that you don't want to lock in your formula. As we copy and paste this formula down, we do want our period to increment here. So I'm not going to lock this argument in the formula. So the next argument is number of periods. So I have that in my table or my spreadsheet here and we do want to lock this so F4 and then you also want to multiply it by 12 because this is years and our periods are monthly so years times 12 is going to get you the total number of periods um, and then the last argument that we're going to end up doing is present value which is the principal amount so you do want to lock that also. And then I can 
copy and paste this formula all the way down, what you should be seeing is that over time, your interest payments are reduced. So they get smaller and smaller as you go down or up in periods, I should say. Um, so that is how interest works on like a home loan. So the next column that we need to fill out is the principal payment column. So this is going to be pretty simple. It's basically just going to be monthly payment minus interest rate uh, because the interest rate and the principal payment combine to make our total monthly payment. So if our monthly payment is 1045 and our interest payment is 603, if I just take this minus this, that's going to be my principal payment. So in the very first uh, period, the zero period, the payment is zero. And then um, in this one, you can just copy and paste your formula all the way down. So I will just do that here. I should have clicked that autofill button, but whatever. So um, you should see on this kind of loan over time, as you make more payments, your interest payment goes down and your principal payment goes up. So now we are on the last column, which is loan balance. So that is going to represent the total amount of the loan that still needs to be paid. So in this zero period, um, it has to equal the principal amount. So I'll just put a cell reference. You can op optionally just copy and paste the entire value into this row. So that is the loan balance. And then what you wanna do is we basically need to, from the loan balance, subtract out um, the principal payments over time and that will give you the loan balance. But as you notice here, this principal payment is already negative, so you actually just want to add them together, not subtract them. So I will just do equals E8 plus F7, and then um, you can copy and paste that down. Whoops, let me just paste it down. Okay, so something did not work here. Let me just fix that. Okay, equals this plus this. Let me just make sure we're doing that right. Okay. Yeah, and something is still not working right. Uh, let me just fix this. There we go. That looks more right. So, had a few troubles there by making some misclicks. So, again, you are just adding this principal payment column to the loan balance, the previous loan balance, because this is already negative. So really what we wanna do is each payment that is made is subtracting from the loan balance, and since it's already negative, we will just be adding it. So as you can see, each period, um, basically my loan balance goes down by the amount that is paid to principal. So that is all of the columns in this sheet if you go all the way down um, you should see that over time as principal payments go up eventually you reach your last payment and there's nothing left on the loan balance to pay if you want uh, what you can do is you can create a sum formula at the bottom if you want to sum up the total interest paid and the total principal paid for the loan payment um, they usually do have that in amortization schedules, so um, I'm not going to show you how to do that. That's pretty basic, but if you followed along this far, you have created your very own loan schedule. 
Um, it's a very useful thing to learn how to do in Google Sheets. Uh, that's pretty much it for the video. Just let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you for watching the video. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or content suggestions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer everyone.